This is an example of calculating the pH after as the result of a neutralization reaction. Calculate the pH of the resulting solution when 200 milliliters of a 0.15 molar solution of hydrobromic acid is mixed with 100 milliliters of a 0.2 molar solution of potassium hydroxide. Okay, the first thing you need to do here is recognize what's going on. Um, so uh, what's going on is you have a chemical reaction between two substances and you need to define what those substances are. Hydrobromic acid is a strong acid, potassium hydroxide is a strong base. So you need to first write down the balanced chemical equation. Hydrobromic acid, HBr, is a solution, a water solution of this, plus a solution aqueous solution of potassium hydroxide. They're mixed together and the result of an acid-base neutralization reaction is that you produce a salt. In this case it's the cation of the base and the anion of the acid, as it always is the case, um, which would be potassium bromide. And that exists, uh, potassium of course has a plus one charge, bromide has a minus one charge, so it's a one-to-one -one ratio of salt. Um, and it's a soluble salt, so it'd be dissolved in water, um, and then the other product is water. Okay, so that's the basic chemistry that's going on. It's balanced to one to one to one to one molar ratio. Now um, we want to um, determine the pH of the solution. So in order to determine the pH of the solution, you have to recognize what ends up in the um, resulting solution. So you have to take a look at how much and what the concentration of each of your reactants are. In this case, we have 200 milliliters of a 0.15 molar solution of hydrobromic acid and 100 milliliters of a 0.2 molar solution of a potassium hydroxide. Okay, and so if we have one to one molar ratios of, and we literally have one to one molar amounts of the strong acid and the strong base, our resulting solution will have a pH of 7 because the salt um, produced um, potassium bromide. Think about the behavior of this. Potassium bromide itself, when it's in water, uh, disassociates to give you the potassium ion and the bromide anion. Since the potassium is a cation from a strong base, it does not have sufficient acid strength to react with water, and the bromide is a anion of a strong acid, it is not a sufficient enough base to react with water, so they're just spectator ions. They just float around in the water, okay? So that we don't have to worry about. Uh, now we have to think about how much of each of um, the acid and the base to see if there's any acid or base left over that could dominate um, the resulting pH of the solution. So um, to figure that out, we need to figure out the number of moles um, of each one of these substances. So in this case, it would be um, the volume times the molarity will give you the number of moles. So um, 0 0.2, 0 0.2 liters times 0.15 um, molar is equal to 0.03 moles. 0.03 moles. So that's how many moles of the HBr we have floating around in solution. Um, and then the uh, potassium hydroxide, it's 0.1 liter, 0.1 liter times uh, 0.2 molar, that equals 0 0.02 moles. Okay, so we're reacting together um, 0 0.03 moles of HBr and 0 0.02 moles of KOH. And since we know that these acid-base reactions go to completion, then um, we can see since it's a one-to-one -one molar ratio, the, uh, this would be the initial amounts we're mixing. The change is that we're going to react away all of the limiting reagent. And since there's less KOH, that's the limiting reagent. So the change is going to be minus 0 0.02 moles and minus 0 0.02 moles. And then, of course, you're going to make plus uh, 2 moles uh, 0.02 moles of the salt, uh, potassium bromide, but it's a spectator, so it's not not going to matter, um, and it's going it's not going to matter in calculating the pH. 
So at the end of this reaction, then we have um, 0 0.01 moles of the HBr left, and we don't have any of the KOH left, and we have 0 0.02 moles of the salt, potassium bromide. So now the question is, what's the pH of the solution? All right, so let's draw another beaker. Now that we know what's actually left, we have the salt already in there that we made, the potassium bromide, and of course water, and we know that um, that's not going to affect the pH at all. And then we also have left in the solution some um, hydrobromic acid. Now what you have to think about is HBr in water exists as the hydronium ion and the bromide anion because it ionizes 100 percent. So that means we have um, 0 0.01 mole of the hydronium ion plus you know, 0 0.01 mole of the bromide plus more of the bromide, the 0 0.02 mole um, from the potassium bromide. Okay, but all we really care about for the pH is the amount of hydronium ion. So it's 0 0.01 mole and of course to calculate the pH, the pH equals the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration and that concentration needs to be expressed in molar units. So if I know I have 0 0.01 mole here at the end of the HBr, I have to also think about what's my total volume of water because I need the concentration and since I mixed uh, 100 mils plus 200 mils, I have 300 milliliters total solution. So the hydronium ion concentration at the end is going to be the amount of hydronium ion, 0 0.01 mole, divided by the total volume, 0.3 liters, and that equals 0 0.033 molar solution, 0 0.033 molar. Okay, so I can take that concentration and plug it into my pH formula, and that's going to be 0 0.033, and so the pH here, just plug it into your calculator, equals 1.5. So the result of mixing an excess of a strong acid with a strong base is going to leave you with a very acidic solution, the pH of which is dominated by the presence of the excess hydrobromic acid.